Once upon a time, there was a kind and honest king named Edric. King Edric had a son named Daniel. Daniel was a skilled archer. He cherished the sport of hunting. He and his friends went hunting in the jungle on a regular basis. On a day like this, Daniel and a few of his friends were hunting in the jungle. When it began to pour heavily because of the thunderous clouds, Daniel and his friends began running in different directions to avoid rain. And while they were running, hither and thither, Daniel became separated from the rest of his friends. As night fell, gradually the prince found shelter beneath a tree. The next day, there was plenty of greenery everywhere. Daniel had no idea whether he was hungry or thirsty because he was so enamoured with the beauty of the nature. After some time, he comes across a house on his way. Daniel enters the house, but there was no one there. He eventually found a pond behind that house. After some searching, he discovered a beautiful fairy standing right beside the pond. Daniel was completely smitten by the fairy's beauty. The fairy smiles as she looks at Daniel and she says, Who are you? Are you trying to find someone? Daniel falls in love with the fairy after hearing her beautiful voice. Uh, yes, um, no, I mean, I am Daniel. I am a prince. I came with few of my friends to go hunting. We were all separated last night due to the storm. I had no idea that there was such a beautiful garden behind the jungle. Seeing this view, I was mesmerized. My thoughts are so calmed by the pond's water. Can I drink some of your pond's water? Please don't consume water on an empty stomach. You must have not eaten anything since last night. I will serve you some food and then you can drink as much water as you want. Daniel was given some food by the fairy and he ate it all up. Daniel had grown tired of eating royal palace food. He questions the fairy. You are a fairy. And you live in such a tiny house? Why so? What is your name? Do you live alone in your home? My name is Flora. I stay alone. The fairy queen cursed me. It was only then that I learned how to cook. Did you enjoy the meal? Your cooking was fantastic. By the way, I would like to spend the night here if you don't mind. You are a prince. I will be delighted if you stay in the small house for the night. Flora cooked dinner for both of them that night and they both enjoyed it. The following day, Daniel inquires about Flora. You were cursed by the fairy queen, but why? It was about two months ago when I was playing in the garden with my friends. Just then, our fairy queen appeared. I did not recognize her. I assumed she had snuck into our garden and that's why I addressed her in a very impolite manner. Just then the fairy queen cursed me and abandoned me in this forest out of rage. My father does occasionally come to see me. My father will meet with me tomorrow and I will introduce him to you. You can sleep here till then. Flora's father arrives the next day to meet her. Flora introduces Daniel to her father. Flora's father was overjoyed when he found a prince in a small house. My dear, make something special for the prince today. No, I don't require anything. I just like the way your daughter cooks simple food. It's just palatable. They all started talking that day. Then Daniel asks Flora's dad, Dad, Flora is the woman I want to marry. Would you agree with that? Flora's father went silent for a while and he said, Your father will not approve for this alliance because you are a prince and we are from fairy kingdom. You don't have to worry about it. I have made my decision. I am only going to marry Flora. 
After a while, Flora's father told her everything and he realized that Flora too had begun to love Daniel. Daniel suddenly walks into the room. I have been given permission by your father to marry you. Simply put, I am curious about your opinion. Flora accepts his proposal as well and she tells Daniel, "But I have one condition. My curse prevents me from leaving this forest. You must stay with me after marriage." Is that okay with you? Wholeheartedly. They both got married. Daniel, Flora, and her father began living as a family. Just like this, after 2 months of marriage, they were spending time together near the pond when they noticed 3 or 4 soldiers standing near their house. Daniel even noticed that the military commander of his kingdom had also arrived. The commander told Daniel, Prince Daniel, the king and queen have been anticipating your arrival for past 2 months. Our king is unable to focus on our kingdom matters because the queen is extremely ill. You must accompany us back to the kingdom right away. You may inform my father that I have married Flora and will be staying with her in this house. You can return to the kingdom and inform the people about this message. Even after repeated insistence from the military commander, Daniel refused to return to his kingdom. But after hearing about his mother's health, he agreed to return. Flora was unable to accompany Daniel to his kingdom due to her curse. As a result, Daniel took out his ring and gave it to Flora as a parting gift, and the prince returned to his kingdom. The villagers were overjoyed to see their prince return after a 2 months absence. The entire kingdom was in a festive mood. The king and the queen were assured that Daniel would not marry without his parents' permission. They were unable to believe what Daniel had just told them about Flora. They refused to accept his relationship because Daniel married a fairy. After a few months The king and the queen forced Daniel to marry again and he agreed solely for the sake of his mother but he couldn't stop thinking about Flora and he was worried about her Flora on other hand gave birth to a baby boy she decided to name him Victor Victor like his father was courageous and strong one day in the royal court the king summons Daniel Son, you must now handle the affairs of the kingdom on your own. Your mother and I have both become old. Daniel was completely immersed in the matters of the kingdom. He desperately wanted to meet Flora, but he couldn't make time for her in his busy schedule. Several years would pass in an instant. As Daniel would continue to think about her, King Daniel was visited by a kingdom soldier who said the following to the king: "Majesty, in this kingdom there are a lot of complaints about theft and robbery. Nobody has ever seen the thief, and yes, my lord, the thief only robs the kingdom wealthy men wealth, and he redistributes wealth among society's poor. Nobody has managed to capture him up to this point. Tomorrow, plan a celebration." Invite everyone to the kingdom and place expensive jewelry on display in one of the rooms. Make sure that the area surrounding the room is securely guarded. As soon as the thief arrives, imprison him and bring him before me. A celebration had been planned in the kingdom as Daniel had instructed his men. Everyone from the kingdom was there, including Victor, who made an appearance. Victor had snakes in his backpack. He drew the snakes out and placed them on a table. After seeing the snakes, the villagers began running here and there, causing panic among the residents. Taking advantage of the situation, Victor went straight into that room, stole all of the jewelry and fled. When Daniel learned of this, he immediately made a public announcement in his kingdom. The person responsible for this theft should voluntarily present himself in the royal court he'll get something in the return for his intelligence victor knew that king daniel was true to his words 
In front of King Daniel the following day, Victor confesses to his crime. To be completely honest, Daniel was very impressed with him. King Daniel found it hard to believe the thief was a thief after observing his character. Daniel asked him, Being a thief, you give the wealth you have stolen to the underprivileged while keeping nothing for yourself. Your approach has truly impressed me. I would like for you to marry my daughter. Immediately after Daniel said this, a familiar voice resounded, Your Majesty, that is impossible. King, take a look at the ring on my hand. If you look closely, you will see that this is Victor, our son. How did you get out of the woods? And what about the curse? I am no longer cursed. Now, I can stay in this kingdom with you. King Daniel was overjoyed when he heard this. In front of everyone, he apologized to Flora. While standing up in the royal court, he crowned Flora as the elder queen before his entire kingdom. And Victor was coronated as the new king. The entire kingdom celebrated the reunion of the king and the elder queen. So the story begins in a small town where George used to live with his small family. His family consisted of his wife Linda, Ben and Peter and Grace. George bore the responsibility of his entire family. He was a meager wager and with that money he would somehow sustain his family. George would leave for work early in the morning and return late at night. Grace was talking to her mother one day when when will father get back from work, mummy? He's not around much, really. We'd like to play with him and spend time with him. My love, your father works incredibly hard to support our family. Yes, mom, we would like to speak with him so badly. Have fun with him. However, he leaves for work early in the morning and returns home well after our bedtime. Yes, brother. However, dad puts in a lot of effort, which is why we are all so comfortable at home. We even go to such a nice school. Peter was a thoughtful and empathetic young man. When Linda heard her kids chatting to each other, she was heartbroken. But she and George didn't want their kids to suffer the same way that they did while growing up. George was afraid that his children should not experience the same poverty the way he had during his upbringing. When George arrived home later that day, Listen, can you please come home a little earlier? Our kids wanted to spend time with you as well. Linda, I know everything. But what option do we have? You know well. Yes, I know everything, George. But can't you just spend one weekend with them? Yes, my sweet. I'll come for sure. Thus, after a few days had passed, George's boss recommended him for a promotion and even increased his salary after observing his hard work and dedication towards his job. Now, George would try to fulfill all of his children's wishes. That is why George is now working harder than ever. However, one day, Mom, I'm sure you're aware that it's almost my birthday. I want to celebrate my birthday with my father. Yes, sweetheart. That day when George returned home, Listen, darling, our Grace will be 8 years on the 10th of this month. She wants to celebrate her birthday with you. I'm not interested in hearing any excuses. You have to come early. Yes, don't be concerned. I'll be there on time. Take this card, please. Purchase whatever you desire for our adorable kid. George was so busy with his business that he forgot about his children and wife's birthday. Earning money was everything to him. They were actually quite wealthy at this point. Linda wanted to take a trip with George and her kids and parents. But every time she brought it up, George would brush it off by saying about how busy he was at work. And exactly like this, the time passed. Grace's birthday had finally arrived. Before heading to the office, George gives Grace a hug and wishes her a happy birthday. Grace gives her father a hug as well and nearly begged him to stay. Yes, dear. I'll come for sure. Listen, you have to leave early today and don't break the heart of the kids. Yes, Linda. I'll be there on time. George leaves for his office and by evening, Grace's friend and family had already arrived for her birthday. 
everyone was ready to cut the cake and was looking forward to seeing George. Linda dials George's number, but he does not answer. Then Linda calls the office, where she learns that he is in a very important meeting and will be late. Linda decides to ask Grace to cut her cake because it was getting late. Grace, on the other hand, was extremely depressed. After finishing their food, everyone returned to their house. At that point, Grace said to her mother, Mom, I knew that dad isn't coming because he doesn't have time for us. No, sweetie, your father must be extremely busy with his work. You should not give Grace false hope, Mom. Dad is never home on time. He is only concerned with money and not with us. I have grown up watching this. No way, brother. This is not the right thing to say. Daddy is working extremely hard for us. Isn't it true that you are his lawyer? Ben and Grace storm off to their rooms in a fit of rage. Linda now makes the decision to speak with George about this. George arrives home late at night and just then, Sorry dear, it was a long and exhausting day. That is why I was unable to attend the evening party. But I do have some good news to share with you. I was given a share of the company. Linda was ecstatic when she heard this. She was well aware that George had worked extremely hard to reach this level. Really, all of your effort has paid off so well. Yes, I have your and our children's full support in this endeavor. That is why I was able to reach this height. First, I want to discuss something. You tell me, my love. Why do you spend so much time chasing after money? With whatever we have, we are content. If you are not careful, it could happen that, that you have money but not your family members. Don't worry, Linda. Everything will be fine. Linda tells her children about the good news the next day. Hearing about their father's promotion made them all extremely happy. George was now one of the most powerful businessmen in the city. He built a sprawling mansion for himself in a matter of days. And he even invited his parents to stay with him in his mansion. At this point, George's house had everything he ever needed. Even so, his absence was sorely felt by his kids. When George once arrived early at home and his kids saw this, they were thrilled. And then Ben said, Do you know, this is the best surprise I have ever received. Yes dear, I have one more surprise for you. And what's that? Tomorrow we are all going to our farmhouse. Is this for real? Yes, Linda. The following day, everyone travels to the farmhouse, a villa with a view of the ocean. Everyone was having a great time there. Together with his kids, George was laughing and enjoying himself. They all sat down for breakfast. Dad, will you spend the first day of the new year with us? Yes, dear. I'm going to spend few days here with you guys. But all I have to do is show up at a meeting tomorrow. I'll be back here as soon as the meeting is over. Yay! Daddy! Grace hugs her father. George leaves for his office the following morning. Suddenly, a tsunami forms in the sea and his entire family drowns in it. After arriving at the office, George listens to the news before quickly returning to his farmhouse. When he got there, he discovered that there was water everywhere. He made an effort to look for his wife and kids, but they all were long gone from his life. And when he can't see them, he falls to his knees and he cries. He recalls something Linda had once told him. We must be content with whatever we have. Why are you chasing after money? George was heartbroken because he was no longer able to see his wife, kids or even his parents. Now, George was completely alone. This story teaches us that wealth is not the be-all and end-all of existence. Between time and money, there should always be a balance. Otherwise, we might have money in the end, but our family might not. A long time ago, in a kingdom, there was a king named Frederick. He had a daughter named Georgia. Georgia was a stunning, beautiful princess. 
with a strong personality. Georgia, as the king's only daughter, would always take advantage of this. Georgia's tenacity ensured that she got everything she desired. Georgia's stubbornness only grew stronger as she grew older. On one occasion, she went to King Frederick as he was relaxing in his room. Goes in and she tells her father, Dad, according to what I have heard, our kingdom's southernmost region contains a large mountain that is home to a beautiful garden. I'd like to see that garden. Oh my dear, the garden you are referring to is engulfed in the darkness of ghosts. According to legend, anyone who climbed the mountain never returns again. That garden is haunted by ghosts. My dear, for many years, no one from our kingdom had ever ventured towards that mountain. That is why you should stop daydreaming about that location. No way, father. I will go to that garden. Start preparing for my visit. Georgia stood by her words. The king eventually had to yield to his daughter's demands. On one condition, princess, I will allow you to climb the mountain. You are free to go there, but you must return home. Staying on the mountain after the sun goes down can be extremely dangerous. So be careful about that. It is a haunted place. Tie a protective thread around the princess's hand before she heads for the mountains. Georgia couldn't sleep that night due to excitement. She made all of the necessary preparations to travel to the mountain the following day. Georgia departed for her journey. Georgia arrives near that mountain after a three-hour journey. She tells the king's men to stay near the mountain's foothills and she sets out on her own. She discovered beautiful trees, greenery, greenery and waterfalls along the way. After some time, she came across a divine garden on her journey. Georgia was lost in the beauty of the garden when she discovered an adorable white rabbit. Georgia ran behind it and captures the white rabbit. Oh no! What a cute rabbit! Oh, where is the thread of protection? When I entered the garden, it was tied to my hand. Anyway, what is the point in obsessing over a thread? Take a look at this beautiful garden. This is so lovely. What danger could I possibly encounter here? Georgia screams and when she looks down in her arms, she notices the rabbit has turned into a rat. Georgia faints after seeing all of this. When she regains her consciousness, she finds herself in an old castle. What am I doing here? And this place stinks to high heaven. I really wish I had listened to my father. Georgia began to cry. When King Frederick in the kingdom was concerned about his daughter, he made an announcement in his kingdom. Anyone who can go to the mountain in the south of the kingdom where the princess was lost and bring her back to the kingdom, the king will grant them the south of the kingdom. Lucas, who was watching him from a nearby audience member, kept thinking about this. Lucas visits King Frederick my lord, I am a common villager. My name is Lucas. I have come to ask for your permission to track down the princess from the mountain. King Frederick was quick to grant him permission to bring princess back. Lucas dashes off towards the mountain. When he sets out to find the haunted garden, he encounters an old man along the way. Lucas approaches the old man and asks him, Hello. Have you seen any princess in this area? I understand your mission and why you have come to this mountain. I have got something for you. Take this. It's a glass bottle containing what looks like a magical water. You can see everything if you sprinkle this on yourself. 
but you will disappear only when you become invisible you will be able to enter the palace on the mountain you will come across princess georgia and will be able to carry her on your shoulders before exiting the castle the moment you leave the castle the ghost will notice the princess is missing and come looking for her outside his palace just as he exits his palace sprinkle him with the holy water in this bottle the holy water's strength will cause the ghost to burn up and become ash just keep in mind that the palace is the ghost delusion you must restrain your senses son i hope you understand what i said be careful that place is very dangerous sir thank you so much i'll do exactly what you say lucas thanked the old man and resumed his journey carrying the glass bottle with him while walking he comes across the same garden and the same beautiful rabbit oh wow look at how adorable this rabbit is hmm i'll check this out first the garden is entirely constructed of illusion let me spritz myself with water before moving forward lucas douses himself in water which causes him to simply vanish when he looked at that rabbit he actually realized it was all along a giant mouse princess georgia appears to have been caught up to this illusion i shouldn't waste any more time here and should hurry to the palace Lucas quickly began his journey to the palace. He finally finds the palace after some time of walking. When Lucas looked up at the castle, he noticed the black clouds and thunder. When Lucas entered the castle, he could hear the princess crying. Lucas begins to walk in that direction. and he notices the princess in one of the rooms he approaches the princess and informs her princess princess please don't cry who who's talking to me who's there princess my name is lucas i have come to take you away but how come i can't see you and how did you find out i was trapped here I was sent here by your father to find you. I ran into an old man on the way here who told me you were here. He even gave me a bottle of magical water that makes me invisible when I sprinkle it and I can see the ghost's illusion. But how are you going to deal with that ghost? That ghost is extremely powerful. The ghost will be reduced to ashes with the help of the magical water. However, princess, that requires us to bring the ghost out of his palace. Now you must sit on my shoulder before we can leave the palace. That ghost will be compelled to leave the palace as soon as he realizes you are no longer there. Only then we can sprinkle this water and burn the ghost to ashes. His fictitious kingdom will crumble the moment he burned to ashes. Saying this, Lucas sprinkles water on himself to make himself visible to the princess. He rushes out of the palace, carrying the princess on his shoulder. As soon as he exits the palace, the ghost becomes aware the princess has been taken away from the castle. And he begins to pursue them. He finds the princess standing outside the castle and rushes to meet her. Lucas appears from behind and sprinkles the magical water on the ghost. As soon as he leaves his palace, the ghost screams loudly and burns to ashes in a matter of seconds. His palace of illusion disintegrates into dust just as the ghost does and slowly but surely the ground swallows it all up princess quick we need to get out of here as soon as possible princess it's my responsibility to deliver you to the king without a scratch your father will be overjoyed to see you lucas returns the princess to her kingdom lucas and the princess return back to the kingdom The king is overjoyed to see the princess and rushes over to embrace her. 
Lucas was given the southernmost part of the kingdom and made king of the kingdom just as the king had promised him.